Hello, 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 and welcome to a very special episode of Three Drams. I am your host, Matt Healy from potstill.com and potstill live. And this is the man who made it all happen, uh, Mr. John O'Donovan, the owner of Three Drams and, of course, irishmalts.com. How are you doing, John? I'm very good, Matt. I'm very good. Very excited for this private tasting. One of the first um, collaborative, collaborative tastings we've done at Three Drams. It's going to be great. Yeah, it's first time we've had a, a private tasting and it was the first time bringing in university. Um, I am very excited to be bringing on uh, a UC uh, Society. Uh, it's uh, close close to my heart. Um, so I think it's going to be a bit of fun. We have three whiskeys to be tasting this evening. Uh, yeah. And it'll be, uh, I think it's going to be very interesting. It'll be a lot of fun. Okay, but Matt, I see at the moment there's already more comments about UCC in the, in the comment section than there is UCD, which is kind of nice. Uh, if, if, if you can if some of the guys in UCD can't tell I'm from the from uh, Cork City, the um, the real capital. Let's put it out there. We get it out there early. So UCC comments are welcome. Uh, but I'd say that all the guys in uh, UCD are also very welcome. And I would like to actually thank Robin and Joseph uh, for coming to us uh, for this collaboration. And um, I hope we can impart some uh, good whiskey knowledge on the good society, uh, food society of UCD. Absolutely. So probably a good point to bring both Joseph and Robin on. So welcome to the show, guys. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Thanks for having us. Uh, thanks for, for joining in and, and uh, organizing this on your end. Um, I mean, everyone obviously knows from your end uh, what Food Sock is, but uh, last event of the year, right? It yeah. is, yeah. This is, we thought we'd go out with a bang, go out as we've been going on, drinking on live streams. Um, so yeah, listen, thanks so much for, for, for partnering with us on this last event. We're, we're really looking yeah. forward to it. Yeah. We're hoping cool. that this will be our um, last event um, online as well. Hopefully, you know, we won't have to do it next semester, but you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. That's very fair. Um, everyone at home uh, who is joining along should have one of these kits with them. Uh, we'll be drinking through, you'll have the three whiskeys inside. I have them lined up behind me here. Um, it's a pretty simple process. They're numbered one, two, and three, and we'll surprisingly be drinking them in the order one, two, and three. Um, there are pretty much a rule on this show that there's no stupid questions. Uh, if, if you have a question, there's probably about five other people thinking that they're, they want to ask the same thing uh, as they're going along, so feel free to ask. Uh, Joseph and Robin, you're going to be sticking around for uh, the rest of the show, um, so you guys sit back, relax, and, and enjoy drinking. Um, but I must say, uh, when I was in UC, we didn't do anything as cool as this. So I uh, I appreciate you guys um, mm -hmm. uh, getting getting involved. How did you guys come up with the idea to do a whiskey tasting as your last uh, event of the year? Well, there was, there was kind of a few bits that led to it. We actually did uh, a cocktail class at one point, um, kind of online as well. And at the end of it, everyone was just asking about whiskey, even though there was not a single cocktail that contained whiskey. And we kind of figured out that like people are really interested in it, but a lot of people don't find it that accessible. You know, kind of like there's a lot of just people are expected to either know everything about it or they know nothing. So we kind of thought, right, whiskey would be a good team. And then um, we saw on the uh, the late late, uh, we saw John talking about the you know three drum service, and we were like, God, this would be potentially a really really good way to 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 do this. And well, here we are now, all on a all on YouTube about to start drinking some whiskey. So it worked out in the end. Exactly. Well, there's a question there. What were you doing watching the late H on a Friday night? <laughs> well, it was, it was either that or, <laughs> or, or a Zoom call. Like, there's not too much to do on Friday nights at the moment. I was joking. That was a really yeah. fun experience for me. Uh, what, what part of the country are you guys locked down in anyway? Dublin. Um, Dublin. Dublin. Yeah, I'm actually from Cork originally, um, but uh, it's in Dublin now. So, yeah. That's two against two. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know about that, John, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> All right, fair yeah. enough. So I, I guess uh, we should probably get going and, and start talking about some whiskey. Um, John, it's time to kick you out, and uh, I guess we'll see you at the end. Uh, Joseph yeah. and Robin are keeping you around. So, John, see you a little bit later on. See you, guys. Um, so, guys, um, yeah, it's unceremonious. He's gone. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, so... Well, we were talking off camera, um, and you guys are saying we wanted to. Well, not only we're we going to go through each of the whiskeys, we're going to talk about a little bit of the background of uh, of whiskey in general. Um, I don't know what uh, what uh, faculties are you guys in. 
I, I, I do law myself. Um, Thank you. And I'm so, in yeah. policy and sociology. So. So. Okay, so okay. I'm also so. an art student. Social science. Social science. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Don't worry. When I was in art, everyone in social science did social science too. So whatever, that's fine. Um, <laughs> it's gonna make but, myself uh, better. Yeah, it's fine. Don't worry about it. I've, I've got your number, Robin. That's fine. I understand what you're doing now. Uh, but yeah. So anyway, um, basically, I was just gonna ask because uh, essentially, whiskey at its base is an agricultural product, and I was gonna just have a wee dig in if there was any ag science students on. Um, but no, basically at the, it, at its basics, whiskey is uh, grain, whiskey, or sorry, grain, water, and yeast. And that's basically it. Uh, you mill them down, you add your yeast for fermentation, and then you stick it in a barrel for a minimum of three years. Um, there's a few different styles of whiskey made in Ireland. Um, the first and kind of most famous, which is also going to be the first whiskey we're trying, is a single malt whiskey, which is just 100% uh, barley that's been malted, milled, uh, and again, distilled and put into a barrel three years. Um, we have a, a style that's pretty much only made in Ireland, which is called single pot still, uh, which we'll also be tasting tonight. Um, and that is kind of a, a, a combination of malted and unmalted barleys. And it just has a kind of different sugar components, it leads to entirely different flavor profiles. And we'll talk about it a little bit later on as we get into the whiskey. Um, and then the kind of final type is a, uh, a grain whiskey, which is made in these kind of very large industrial columns, um, very much the non-romantic side of, of whiskey producing. Um, and that's made from maize or corn. Uh, and then you can kind of combine any of those three, all three or, or any two, and you can make what's called blended whiskey. And we'll have a, a blended whiskey uh, in the mix as well later on. Uh, have any of you guys drank much whiskey before or is this kind of a first time for you guys? Drank a lot of it, no, nothing about it. Uh, <laughs> um, I kind of know what tastes like whiskey, and that's kind of where my knowledge ends. Um, <laughs> and Robin, much whiskey experience? Um, not really. I'd be I'd be the same as as Seth here. I um I'd I'd know what it tastes like, but nothing nothing really about it. So I'm interested to hear what you've got to say. That's fair enough. Okay. Well, as I said, um, one of the the first styles we're going to be trying um is probably the most uh potent of flavors as we we're going through the night this is definitely going to be a, a a lovely wake up for the senses for anyone who uh is maybe a little bit uh, sleepy coming into this tasting and um, this is I, I suppose one of one of the most newest and, and most interesting whiskeys going around doing the rounds of the country at the moment this would be dram number one uh, and I'm delighted to be uh, introducing Donald McGlynn from the company Two Stacks to produce this whiskey. And this is the Two Stacks uh, Smoke and Mirrors Peated Single Malt. Uh, so, Donald, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Matt. Uh, glad to be here. Quite a surprise to be here. Um, we're facing with, uh, some university students. Long far, it's a far cry from uh, Fat Frogs and Food Vodka. You know, it's Tesco Vodka. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I, 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 when I when I was in UCD, I didn't do half as cool as shit as this. And I ran a society. I didn't do fucking shit as cool as this. So. It's um, things are very uh, rapid. Moving in the right direction rapid. with the speed and drinking anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had a lot of questions from people coming in asking if they could mix the whiskeys with ginger ale, and we were kind of saying, no, no probably not. Oh, we'll get much of the taste out of it. Look, Mate. I always say, it, 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 as long as you pay for it, you can do whatever the hell you want with it. So yeah. 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 <laughs> there we go. I stand corrected then. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I've got uh, dram number one here in the glass. Um, you don't have to pour all of it in, but if you uh, do uh, have some left in your glass after we try dram number one, and um, try to keep if you have multiple glasses, try to keep uh, a little bit in each glass, just as you go along, so you can kind of compare back. Um, but as I said, Donald, uh, you're you're a representative from uh, Two Stacks Irish Whiskey, um, and this is our first whiskey of the evening. It, it is a peated single malt, and um, so as I said, single malt is just from a single distillery and 100% malted barley. Yeah. Um, um, but uh, do you want to give us a little quick background into what peated is? Uh, because obviously, this is going to be a, a, a as I said, a, a, an interesting wake up call for the beginning of a tasting. Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, there, there isn't much, uh, I suppose, um, recognition for peated Irish whiskeys. You no, know, Matt. I think we had a good discussion on this a few few weeks back, just trying to find the, the history of like peated 
repeated uh, expressions coming from Ireland. Um, simply peat and malt is when they're drying out the barley um, for in order to extract the sugars, they, they soak the barley um, in water to create the sugars to break down and, and make it easier to ferment. So in the process of drying out barley, they use open fire, peated fires, which basically smoke, it's a smokehouse. Um, you see a lot of them in Scotland. And um, the flavour from this particular sort of that'll come from different areas of Scotland. So the, you know, Scotland predominantly because they are more kind of renowned for the, the this type of uh, whiskey. But the flavour profile that'll come from the, the peat or the, the the dried out, um, I suppose bog you want to call it. That that'll that'll stick to the barley, and then once that's fermented, you'll finally get, get that taste profile through the whiskey. Um, and so in Ireland, we don't really traditionally have a big uh, following for 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 peated. I mean, it, it's growing now, but historically, it's kind of died out. Um, and yes, it's it's definitely um, certain. There's a lot of education to be done, so we're we're starting in a good place, really, with a young crowd who are drinking peated peated whiskey. It can be quite a marmite. It can be quite a marmite um, uh, liquid. Sure. When, when you're sticking your nose in the glass, and the, obviously it's our first whiskey of the evening, it might be some people's first time trying whiskey. What's the peated element that's, you know, like the, what's what what does peat smell like, I suppose? I mean, it, there's some different, like you can campfire, you can have like kind of a, a char, a chard, it could even be burnt, could you have like more tobacco notes, kind of earthy, um, but also it's kind of softer, kind of sweeter notes that kind of come through. Um, on this, on this, it's, it's a triple distilled malt, so it means it's, it's ran through distilled three times. Traditionally, in a lot of peated malt are double distilled. I'd be probably correct in that, Matt. Would it be? Um, yeah. And so, uh, with that, it kind of gives it a bit more. It's a bit more refined, refined flavor. So it's not as intense on the nose or on the palate. And um, so on this, I mean, it's more of a kind of a light, kind of uh, smoked, smoked kind of cereal barley, rich barley, but. Um, more hay, and I get quite a, a bit of rhubarb on the nose. Um, quite, cause, I mean, I'm, I'm to eat that, but um, a more kind of a sweeter, a sweeter element. Um, and so it's not, it's not too in your in your in your face type of of um, peat. Uh, for, like you know, some of them that you might have heard of Connemara, say Connemara whiskey that's um, been around for quite a long time. That's very intense. Um, and then, but then you have to go to the kind of Scotland where you get even more. Like in your face, like Lefroy or Ardbeg or one of these guys, and um, but this is quite mellow. Uh, well, for me anyway. I mean, I, I, we just know what you're the people tasting it. Exactly. So you want to take a little sip, uh, if you haven't done so already. Hey, I think myself and Robin jumped the gun and have just been drinking it in the background for a while. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, there's a really good trick for drinking whiskey uh, and to try to get rid of that kind of alcohol burn as well on the palate, and it's a trick for any spirits. If you kind of hold it on your palate for a couple of seconds, you can aerate it or move it around. It essentially, you know, gets your body used to high high strength alcohol. It's just your body's reaction to what essentially is a poison, but a very yeah. tasty poison at that. Um, so if you take a, a mouthful of it and essentially swirl it around or, or aerate it a little bit and then swallow, you're going to have a much easier time with, with the palate of it. Um, and while this has a quite a smoky nose, there's there's a very, very a nice kind of honey sweet um kind of biscuity palette underneath which that's just a little bit of a smoke at the end um yeah uh, i think uh, i mean we've we've a large portion of this malt has been finished in uh, ex imperial stout casks um from a craft brewery um in ireland so i think from that element i think stout stout and whiskey go hand in hand there's a great part great marriage in, in the flavor profiles so with this you kind of get more of a kind of a chocolate chocolate note and on the back end it's kind of a bit more of a light espresso or kind of uh, caramel on it, so it kind of really does it mellow it mellows out the piece. If it, if, if, if it's a good combination, you know. Absolutely. What What are you guys thinking, uh, Robin? What are, What's your impressions of this at the gates? Um, I it, it does smell very yeah. smoky. It, it it's very it's very strong. I can't lie. I can't lie. It's very strong for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. It's a, it's definitely one the first one off the bat with this is it's yeah it's it's going to be quite um, it's a lot to take in I think um, and again I think as your palate adjusts to drinking more whiskey and kind of more sophisticated flavors you will kind of start to appreciate it more but if you don't if you, this is your first time drinking heated whiskey I'm you know you probably hate it oh I I I'd say it <laughs> uh, one one as I said one of the things if you keep some in your glass as we're going through. 
you can compare back as we uh, go through each of the taste uh, different whiskeys we're tasting this evening to be able to see what the flavor differences are, whether it's the style of whiskey or the cast that they're in and give you a little bit of, uh, of an indication. Um, are you a fan of the hand, the rub and hand trick, Donald? Um, uh, oh, yeah. Well, I see. I've, I've got a little topper for that to see. Oh, there you go. So uh, for me, it's uh, if you get a little bit of the of the spirit on your hand and you give it a rub just to the moment it gets kind of sticky, uh, yeah. um, you burn off the alcohol and you're just getting kind of the flavor notes underneath. It's a, yeah. it's a, it's a distiller's trick, but it's kind of it's kind of a, a little neat trick uh, to be able to get those flavors underneath all of that alcohol. Yeah, more of kind of that earthy. It's like more of an earthy element coming through, kind of like a farmyard, farmyard kind of hay thing. But um, like tobacco, I get a lot of tobacco on it. But yeah, um, yeah, like I said, I mean, it's 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 definitely um, a type of whiskey, this style of whiskey that's growing more popular in Ireland. Um, I think we're we've seen the last few years that there's been like even Teeling and a few others been coming out with them. Um, and I think it's going to grow. I think it's going to grow as people's palates kind of adjust to. You know, because um, we're so used to just really sweet, sweet whiskies uh, and obviously refined whiskies that are triple distilled. But I think in the next five years, you'll probably, um, you'll probably see a lot more coming to the market. I don't even know if, if Buon or these guys are, are doing anything in the peated uh, expressions. But um, yeah, it's uh, definitely, there's definitely a massive market to it. And uh, for young people too, I mean, it is, it is quite, can be quite uh, intimidating for a young audience. But yeah, we're seeing a lot of popularity at the moment. Joseph, what's your what's your thoughts so far? Did you well, Donna? Did you say our bag by any chance? Because that's like the only Scotch whiskey I've ever drank, and I kind of got the same kind of smokiness from it. I don't know. I, yeah. I might be completely making that up, but no, well, you're, you're not too intense. A bit, yeah, a bit milder than than that, than the other one though. But yeah, I, I quite like it. Uh, someone in the comments said barbecue. And I kind of can see where they're coming from with that. Um, but yeah, I, I quite like it. I think it's, you know, I see what you mean about it. It's, you know, it might, it might be a bit of a kind of challenging one to start with, but I, I do think it's really nice, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, thanks very much, Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, like, I, I remember uh, I ran a fucking, like, 2014, I ran a, a whiskey and cigars night in when the student bar just opened. Uh, in the student center and uh i had one no idea what the fuck i was talking about and two uh like 40 of us sat in the student bar drinking connemara and smoking cigars and we thought we were the shit and we hated it the time um it was just peated peated whiskey and cigars and none of us smoked and and yeah. there was no unpeated whiskeys so it was uh and we'd never drank whiskey cool. which i'm sure well we thought we looked cool but like i'm sure we didn't <laughs> Um, um, but yeah, well, yeah. I mean, like the, the, likes, the likes of this. I mean, the, this place plays really great into say an Irish coffee um, or some kind of traditional cocktails like an old fashioned, because um, that ex, that extra kind of flavor profile um, really plays well to some cocktails. So, um, if there's any cocktail, if uh, you know, skill experts out there who are guys who like to do it in a hobby, you should give this a whack. It's it's actually good fun to kind of see what you can create. I actually uh, have it here in the side glass in a soda water, which oh, is, yeah. a, is a favorite long drink of mine. It, it, it plays plays nicely with the soda water, and a lot of that little kind of sweet smoke element comes through quite a lot, which is which is quite fun. Yeah. Uh, nice, nice. I have to try the high balls for the summer. That's the way to go. Exactly, the way to go. Yeah. Um, um, and if anyone in in the who's watching at home in the comment section has um, any questions at all for for Donald as they come through, uh, or anyone as we go through feel free to ask them um because there's obviously gonna be a lot of information as we go along and sure we're here for the crack like you might as well have have a bit of fun as we're as we're drinking the last food sock event of the year um yeah 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 really they don't seem too shy to use the comment section no <laughs> there's, there's, there's a fair few comments coming in uh most of them make no sense but you know, <laughs> maybe we did miss people miss <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, asking if I'm single. No, I'm sorry, Fig K7, I'm not single. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, and no, my name isn't actually Pot Stilled. But if you Google that, there will be a website that is attributed to that name. So that makes sense. <laughs> um, but yeah, hey, um, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, 
I suppose for if if people I suppose are looking to to like you know learn a little bit more about two stacks, uh, do you want to just give them a, a quick rundown of what you guys do and, and the whiskeys you make while we sit here sit here and sip for a little bit? Uh, yeah, cool. Um, so we're we're established a young brand. We only kind of came to market last year. This time last year, actually, just as COVID really was starting to take its grip on a lot of the country and the world. Um, and myself and uh, my two colleagues, uh, Liam Brogan and Shane McCarthy, we have six years in the exports of craft beer and, and, and basically craft spirits from Ireland. So we have a background in, in the drinks industry. And we um, we have such passion in the whiskey that we, we really wanted to kind of um, bring something creative and wonderful to the world. So we came, we came up with two stacks. And uh, we're basically a bottler and soon to be a licensed bonder and blender. And uh, essentially Ireland uh, has a history in this kind of uh, trade of, of even my great great grandparents in Sligo, they had their own, uh, they used to bottle for Guinness. And my great grandmother used to kind of bottle her own brandy and stuff to used to bring into port. And uh, this used to go on in every town and every city in Ireland. They'd have small little merchants that, that kind of buy casks from like the Jemison or any local distillery and then used to house the cask in their cellar or wherever they can and they bottle it under their own label so there's this like really rich and, and deep history that not that i don't even know like a huge amount because you know i'm still trying to find more information and the likes of matt and finon like these guys are always trying to dig deeper into these kind of like lost, almost lost treasures of irish history and um so we want to kind of help provide that type of that type of um industry again and i think it was nearly lost i mean there's a few kind of um established brands now that have made a market in it and uh, so essentially what we want to do is like source source aged and and new make and age in our own places and and blend it so we want to try and make very unique expressions and at the moment like it's very difficult to get source aged back. so you know get anything from bushmills or any pernero cards or jemison or any of these guys it's, it's very difficult so you know we're um but at the moment we're the first uh company to put whiskey in a can 100 mil cans which launched in america last year um or this year sorry and uh yeah so this summer we hope to really expand and kind of push into doing some really niche stuff um like what we're tasting um stuff that not everyone's going to like but it's stuff that we really love doing so we're not going to try and please everybody but we want to make really good quality whiskey um and so yeah you'll probably hear a lot about us in the next you know five to ten years hopefully um you know and uh yeah, it's good to have you have a younger audience, particularly like younger and female audience drinking whiskey too, because that's a that's a market we really want to try and obviously tap into. I think it's it's been undervalued and underappreciated for a long time. And so, who says young people don't appreciate good whiskey? I mean, we're here to prove a point, right? So it's a good start. <laughs> you guys. Well, if, well, if you keep giving us whiskey, we'll give you our members. Don't worry about that. We'll <laughs> play play. It's a good trade, Joseph. <laughs> um, Donald, someone's asking in the comments, uh, how did you get into whiskey professionally? Um, I mean, just by chance. I mean, I, I six, about eight years ago, I was bartending in, in New York, and, and that's where my colleague, uh, Shane McCarthy, he, he was setting up a company called Art of Craft Beverages. So I moved back to London, and um, really, the, it was just an evolution of, of what we were doing. We, we started off as a small, um, you know, small startup company, and we eventually started exporting to about maybe 20 different countries worldwide. And so COVID, really, that was really down to COVID. We had the idea of doing a whiskey brand for years, but it was just, I suppose, we were so busy with our other profession in regards to building art and craft beverages that we just didn't have the time. And then COVID came along and I, I, I personally, myself and Liam, we went on furlough, but we were still working in the background trying to develop, you know, uh, two stacks. And we managed to um work with a very very big importer in america who were keen to to kind of develop the, the whole story and and what we were about and they gave us the push that we needed to, to kind of really financially and and personally uh, jump deeper into the whole project and uh yeah it kind of just it, it evolved from six years of just really the back end of doing other work with with cideries and, and breweries and, and craft distilleries in ireland so it wasn't something that we just did woke up one day and started a brand. Uh, never it really never really happens like that, to be honest. So um yeah, it's been a kind of stepping stone to here. Um, but you know, it it's it's probably the most exciting exciting space, I think, personally. Like it's 
all something to do with it. it's an amazing like Matt Matt will tell you he's 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 been in the game a long time and just from what you used to do from Tullamore back in the day Matt's where you are now like it's it's kind of some change and but even in the same industry it's amazing where you can go yeah absolutely I mean there's there's graduate programs with Jemison and Tullamore and a lot of different companies as well that'll send you all over the world you know I have friends that were whiskey brand ambassadors in Bangalore and Tokyo and I was a uh, brand ambassador in uh, Philadelphia for two years. And that was pretty cool. So it's, it's a good industry. Um, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. One uh, one question we have in it as well is uh, what what uh, whether the cans are going to be available in Ireland soon. Uh, we're working on that. It's only exclusively in America. Um, but we're working on having our own facility set up at the end of this summer. Um, all going to plan, and so. If we could have them rolled out before Christmas this year, that would be great. But uh, everything with this, you know, with you know, COVID and whatnot, you just can't make promises. So that's the plan. At the end of this year, we hope to have uh, cans in Ireland. So for the young UCD students to be sipping a bag of two stack cans. <laughs> yeah. yeah, fucking locked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Responsibly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, that's what the secret likes for responsible drinking. Yeah. <laughs> um, hey, it's better than buying a bottle. Buy a can. Sorry, it's better than buying a full bottle. Just buy a hundred mil can. There you, there you go. <laughs> more affordable too. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So yeah, hopefully, um, yeah, we've we've got a lot of interest in Europe. So um, I think the sooner the sooner the better for us. But these things take time, unfortunately. You know. Well, um, for me, I, I appreciate you coming on and introducing us to the the world of peated single malts. As I said it's it's a, a lot of flavor straight out of the gates, but uh, I hope people have enjoyed it. Um, and uh, we're gonna have a uh, you know we're gonna j jump on to some uh, single pot stills and some some uh, blends. But I appreciate you coming on, taking in some time out of your night to to, to talk to us about peated single malts. Uh, Robin, Joseph, if you have any questions for Donald, feel free to ask them now. But if not, uh, I'll wish him uh, a good evening. I, uh, there was one more just came in in the comments there, actually. Uh, for both of you, have you always been into whiskey or uh, just a career, th or has the career just thrown you into it? Um, yeah, I'll let you Sorry, Donald. I'll let you, I mean, I think that, that question is geared to two of us, so I'll let you answer yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, I, I wasn't, um, I, you know, I, I spent, you know, years drinking beer and cider and, uh, I actually took a, I, I was the art sock auditor in 2014. Um, so I took a year out then after that, and I went to basically what you're doing now, as soon as my term ended, I went and, uh, went and lived in Vancouver in Canada for the guts of a year. Um, and, uh, I ended up working in an Irish bar and uh being put into kind of a cocktail shabine like whiskey bar and uh, i was studying economics uh, and i was told for every hundred dollars you put into learning about whiskey to sell to the customers you'll get 400 bucks back in tips and as an economist that was a great return on investment so i was i was pretty happy with that um and i started learning that way and you know i kind of fell in love with it when i said at the beginning it's three ingredients it's it's grains, yeast, and water plus time. And, you know, in the world of nano, uh, nanotechnology and supercomputers, you, you can't cheat it. It's kind of, it's exactly the way that, you know, the Celts and the Romans made it. So uh, I I fell in love with it that way. I actually um, was, I was supposed to go off to London to do a to PhD in, in economics, and I just fucking canceled that. And, uh, <laughs> that that's the of your life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I, I had a fucking life plan that I had for myself. I was going to work in the World Bank. It was going to be great. Um, and I found the whiskey industry, and I called up someone I knew who worked in the whiskey industry, and they were like, that is useless. Don't come to me with economics. Um, so I... I scrapped that, did a master's in, in um, Smurfit and uh, ended up doing uh, going to live in the States for two years working with Tullamore Jew. So it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was definitely, it, it started off as a, as a, I suppose a job abroad and it turned into a passion project and turned into a career. And, you know, you join the whiskey societies and whatnot and you can learn. And as I said, there's the Jemison graduate program that'll send you all across the world. There's the IBEC global graduates, which is the same idea, just with tons of different Irish brands. Um, and a lot of people who go through that end up, um, 
in uh, different, uh, w- you know, the whiskey industry for life. Donald was a Bushmills ambassador. Um, yeah. yeah. Part time, part time. Yeah. For my sins. Um, yeah. I mean, like, the, I mean, for me, I was like, uh, my family, they have a, it's a fourth generation pub. So I was kind of those working in the behind the bar. I, I, I'd be honest, when I was working behind the bar, I really no interest in Irish whiskey back in the early 2000s or, you know, mid to because Irish whiskey wasn't really an industry that people cared about. So it wasn't something that I kind of naturally gravitated towards. Um, but it's only when I moved to New York that um, I kind of started getting into more like bourbons and and um, and then kind of got a taste for Irish whiskey. Um, and then the company, yeah, just kind of, as I said, it kind of evolved the, into what it is now. Um, you know, it's I, I, couldn't, I couldn't choose a better career in, in regards to what we do. Like, I mean, I've been working for myself for the past seven years now. So nearly seven years. So um, when you're in that space, it's all it's almost impossible to go back to, uh, I suppose, a life where it's structured and you've got a hierarchy of employees and all this kind of jazz. So, um, yeah, I mean, any any kind of young entrepreneurs of UCD right now, like looking to kind of just take a, take a leap of faith in your own ability to start a company or do something, you might as well do it because, you know, it's it's the most challenging, but it's also the most rewarding if it, if it comes through. And um, I leave on that note. <laughs> all right. I'll say uh, before you go that the the pe- the people who do the graduate programs and whatnot definitely don't need uh, to have like whiskey qualifications or anything like that. You know, it's this is uh, particularly in the whiskey marketing and whiskey ambassador world. Uh, it's very much a personality game. You have to be the person that's able to walk into a bar and talk to every single person there. And if you can do that and your degree is in, you know, Italian and art history, uh, perfect. They'll, you know, you can go to India, but if you're, you know, you've got linguistic skills and you speak Japanese, perfect. And you can yeah. talk to somebody, you're off to Japan. You know what I mean? There's a, there's a wide range of, of people that are able to, to join that world. And it's very much not um, just people that know whiskey. You can learn whiskey. Um, and I suppose that's why we're, we're here tonight. Um, yeah. Sure. Uh, you just take the gift, the gift of the gab, you know. That's I think that's what the, the Irish, the Irish have a, an abundance of that skill. So, and we receive very well, no matter where you go for for a job like this. So, yeah. But anyway, yeah, yeah. Donald, but, uh, sorry, Joseph, any any more comments you want to go through, or, or you're all up to date? I I think we're pretty much up to date. There's uh, a few people having a great chat in the comments, but I don't think they have any questions for us. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> I think we're sure. pretty good that's fair all right well donald thanks so much for your time we're gonna jump on to some more whiskeys and um i appreciate it enjoy enjoy the rest of the drums and uh thank you thank you you. uh so guys what do we what do we think of dram number one different uh i suppose unusual uh a lot of flavor going on um I, we already got Robin's opinion on it, but uh, Joseph, you're, you're, you're happy what's in the glass? I think I saw you polishing her off at, uh, a little bit about five minutes ago. So, yeah, Couldn't yeah, I, I did. I did all right. Uh, definitely having had something kind of similar before, it was nicer the second time. Uh, like having had our bag ages ago, I remember drinking it and kind of going, you know, like this is pretty intense. But kind of the second time, or whatever, it was, you, you know, I kind of appreciated a bit more. So maybe it's the sort of thing that. Um, the more you kind of have, the easier it kind of gets to to, to appreciate it. But I, I quite like that one anyway. Um, yeah. yeah, I did publish it off a while ago. Sorry, I was trying to trying to keep it slow. But <laughs> uh, listen, now we're here for a bit of crack anyway as well, so might as well. Um, are you happy to jump into drown number two? Cool. Yeah. Uh, so drown number two. Uh, this is our Galston's uh, single pot still Pinot Noir cask. Um, so this has spent uh 19 months in ex bourbon casks which is going to give it a kind of a nice vanilla uh creaminess to it and then 21 months in new zealand pinot noir casks so we have uh this is drown number two here and you want to open it up and you can hoof it into the glass um and again if you have any uh samples left over um at the end you can you can bounce between them so single pot so as i said at the beginning is um the indigenous style of whiskey in ireland it's uh, in the 1800s is actually the largest uh, selling brand spirit in the world so we were bigger than scotch and cognac and bourbon and armagnac and everything um and this is what we were selling in this style it's 
essentially, uh, if single malt is 100% malted barley uh, from one distillery, uh, this is uh, essentially 50% uh, malted barley and 50% unmalted barley from one distillery. And it creates a very different flavor profile. Um, just because the unmalted barley, you can't, uh, the yeast can't convert those sugars in it um, into alcohol as easily. But what they give off is a lot of different oils and flavor compounds that make kind of a creamy or peppery mouthfeel. Um, if you want to have a little nose of this, um, and I know if you have a little sip as well, there's a very different flavor profile to the last one. Um, this is I said, unpeated so that everything, all the grains in this are dried with uh, essentially warm air rather than uh, peat. Um, and there's none of that smoke in in uh in an unpeated single mall or a single pot still but there's a lot of fruitiness in this one um compared to what we were tasting a moment ago um what, what are your your thoughts uh first up um obviously very different to the the last one yeah a lot different um probably a lot of an e a, a much easier one than than the last one um I really like it. Uh, it's a lot softer or something, is it? I, I don't really know what words he's but kind of. That's, that's fine. Don't worry about it. You, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, on the palate, it's definitely softer, but it doesn't have that same kind of uh, barbecue or, or smoke grain abrasiveness to it. Um, it's obviously, a, it's an entirely different style of whiskey uh, for a different kind of flavor profile. Um, there's almost a, a, an oil, a, a larger kind of oil component to the, the mouthfeel. It's almost a little bit like thicker or oilier. Uh, and that, again, is coming from the unmalted barley. Uh, Robin, how are you enjoying it? Yeah, I definitely um, enjoy this more than more than the other one. Um, it, it, it's more familiar whiskey, I think, to me. It, 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 like that I've that I've had before, which is um, nice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Um, so I said this. This is um, the. It's in uh, aged in two different casts. So the the bourbon cast the first nineteen months, they're coming from the U.S. Uh, American white oak, and they'll impart a lot of that kind of uh, creamy vanilla, um, a little bit of honey, um, some almost, almost like charred wood, uh, kind of crackling wood to the back of it, and then with the. Uh, New Zealand uh, Pinot Noir casks is where that fruitiness is going to come in. So uh, a little bit of raspberry, some tropical fruits in there, maybe some uh, black currants on the nose. And if you want to try the hand cook again as well, uh, it'll give you an entirely different flavor profile uh, to the, the last whiskey we tried. So you get a lot of that kind of creamy viscidiness going on the background. It loses a lot of the fruit for me, uh, which is interesting. It's kind of like dried fruit is what I'm kind of getting with yeah. that. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. yeah. Brown, but kind of like dates or something or sultanas. Yeah. No, no, no. no. You're, you're bang on the money there. Yeah. Uh, I see... Uh, <laughs> I see someone asking, uh, how, how is it dry if it's a liquid? <laughs> this is a question I ask. That's a question I used to ask for years. I used to work in bars and always wonder how we had dry wines and sweet wines. Um, essentially, it just has to do with residual sugars. Um, so certain wines and whiskeys will have a large, a large amount of sugar in them, which will give kind of a, a sweet uh, flavor to the palate, um, whereas others are essentially every single gram of that sugar is is fermented out and that'll give a, a dry palate um and that's essentially what people mean when when they say dry uh dry or sweet is essentially how much that sugar is left um i like to see julia saying the smell of this one and rubbing up your hands is fab uh this is a trick you can do with any spirit it, it works uh, really well with with gin and whiskey in particular um just burning off that alcohol gets you to smell what's beneath it um, and you can try it for, for all three of the whiskeys we're trying tonight. Um, and particularly if you do it again, you can get down to all the botanicals underneath as well and get through a lot of the flavor that comes comes from it. I think I spotted actually at one point someone asking their, I don't know if they were asking or suggesting a gin version of three drums. I don't know if, if that's something you're interested in, but Tara needs her gin apparently. So thanks. Well, thanks. well. <laughs> 
<laughs> so you should just drop back into the into the comments with Jin. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, it's definitely definitely a concept that as I said I, I'm I'm just the host here. I, I come from potstill.com, so I come to to take over and share my knowledge. Um, when it comes to uh, uh, the actual running of three drams, that's very much um, the the John's John's end. Uh, he has uh, he's jokingly in the private chat uh, suggesting uh, uh, www.3gins.com. So apparently he already owns he already owns that and three beers.com. So maybe there's something coming in the end, coming down the line. Uh, although I don't know. I mean. I think people trying a box of three different whiskeys uh, niche side by side is uh, something people are, you know, even in a beginner sense, you know, palatable with and okay with. Um, from a professional point of view, from working in distilleries, uh, I've drank a lot of gin niche, which is fine if you're used to it. But uh, gin niche, if you're not used to it, can be very uh, overpowering and, and strong in flavor. So uh, maybe something to be fleshed out. Um but there's, I see uh, Richard, Richard has a question to what types of wine barrels you use most. Um, this this uh, is probably an outlier in the sense that this is New Zealand Pinot Noir. Um, this is uh, mainly because uh, the owner of Samuel Galston's, his cousin owns a winery in New Zealand uh, and they primarily make a New Zealand Pinot Noir and that's where the cast came from. Um, but in whiskey production, uh, ex bourbon barrels are the backbone of of the industry, um, but uh, sherry casks are actually the wine cask of choice. So it's fortified wine from Spain, and that'll deliver a lot of those dried fruit notes that you were smelling, Joseph, in the uh, in the in the the kind of the rubbing part of of the of the whiskey, um, and that that's that's what you'll see most. Um, but yeah, that's a really really good question. And uh, I like to see Tara saying she should take her money when three gins opens. Uh, I'll, make, I'll make sure to keep it going. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Um, so uh, I suppose overall, um, uh, a very different drinking experience to the to the last one. Uh, much sweeter profile, uh, more fruity, that kind of creamier mouthfeel coming from the fact that there's no malted barley in there. And again, as I said, it's a it's it's an agricultural product with with a three year waiting game at the minimum. This this product is over the three year mark, um, and already a lot of flavor coming from both the grain and the barrel itself. Um, but um, yeah, um, what what are your, your thoughts? I, I mean, is this is this something palatable for you guys? Are you still getting alcohol burn? You know, what? How are you? Uh, are you enjoying? Uh, I suppose the the whiskey niche and in, in uh, which the last whiskey actually was um, forty eight percent alcohol, and this is forty percent alcohol, which is the legal minimum for whiskey. So forty percent of the bottle is, is ethanol and sixty is water. Nice, yeah. Um, I think I really like this one, but if I was to kind of order whiskey in a bar or something, it would probably be like. Uh, I, I might get this completely wrong in, but something like Green Spot or Red Breast, because my dad likes them. And I think they're kind of are they the same make? They're kind of like single pots as well, or am I wrong? Yeah, no, yeah. They're, they're yeah, you're in the right. Okay, right. great, cool. I've I've officially had enough whiskey to pretend I know what I'm talking about. But um, <laughs> it's half battle. Yeah, but uh, so I definitely really like that one. Um, you know, because I, I really like those other ones. Um, so so that was I, I probably preferred that to the other one, but the other one was still interesting. But I, I really like that one anyway. Yeah, yeah, uh, and uh, if if this is kind of akin to a green spot, so you're in the right right category in in, in both style and casks, um, and one of the you know one of the important things is learn one whiskey, and then you sound like a fucking genius. Just order that at a bar and, and just tell people about what you're drinking. You don't have to say it. no one else is gonna no one's gonna challenge you on it or ask you for like supplementary information. You'll sound you're, like you you're know. You're writing me of one of my friends here, uh, Matt. This is this is what I do. <laughs> <laughs> all the time. Oh yeah, it's a single pot still. So they all know now. They all know my secret. <laughs> um, and Robin, are you, are you enjoying this one? I know you already said you're enjoying this more than the than the um, than the peated cask, but so yeah, so pleasant. Yeah, um, I'm not getting um, that burning sensation, which is always a 
it's always a plus. So we're really Fair enough. I'm liking it. Like it. Um, there's uh, a couple of questions coming through. Um, the what what gives whiskey its darker color? Um, the second is darker than the others. Uh, that's a really good question. So essentially, whiskey comes off the still. Um, so it's made in essentially just giant, large copper pot stills. They look like giant kettles. Essentially, uh, it goes in as as a beer, about eight percent. And in copper pot stills, they usually get distilled up to about 82% alcohol and it comes off completely colorless. So it looks just like water. Uh, it doesn't taste like water, but it looks just like water. Um, and when you put, uh, that's essentially officially spirit and you put into a barrel, it has to reside there for three years um, and it will then start picking up color. The flavor comes from the alcohol essentially being like the wood breathing with the alcohol in the barrel so it'll enter the the wood staves and and come back out of it again and it'll pull with it flavor and color and different uh barrels depending on what type of wood it is and also what they held in it previously will affect the color of the of the whiskey so uh the previous whiskey we had uh, was in bourbon and beer casks um which would have had a, a soft yellow hue to it, almost amber or straw kind of color. Um, whereas this whiskey has uh, Pinot Noir casks, which is a French oak. It's a little bit darker than the American oaks that uh, the other casks are. Uh, and Pinot Noir is a, is a darker um, liquid as well. So there's some residual wine left in the wood. It'll pull out as well for the color. Um, and that and that's essentially where, where that color comes from. And it kind of rolls into uh, the next question, which is does older whiskey always means better? Um, it's it's a pretty good guide that older whiskey is is better in a sense um, that it's just left to mature longer. It'll have more robust, uh, more structured flavors, um, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that's not a, that's not a rule, um, more a guide if that makes sense. Um, you know, there's what you know. This is what's called a non-age statement whiskey. So this isn't an age on the bottle because you put an age on a bottle. Uh, that has to be the youngest whiskey in that bottle. So you can have, you know, 40-year-old whiskeys mixed with a three-year-old, but you'd have to legally put a three-year-old age statement on that bottle if you wanted to put an age on it. Um, so uh, if you, uh, you can make absolutely stunning, fantastic whiskeys of lots of different ages um, or different cast types or spirit types, um, and they'll go up um, punching against uh, whiskeys twice their age. And um, just because they're either different styles or, or in, you know, better casks or, you know, that kind of thing. So it's, it's a rough guide, but it's definitely not a rule. And it's one of those things to be able to work yourself to, to try and work through different ranges um, to uh, figure out what you like in terms of different distillates. Um, and it's, you know, whiskey exploration is fun. Uh, you can get drunk while you're doing it. Um, and, and, and also just on a side note, you know, the question as well, when said, you know, 12 year old red breast is half the price of the 21 and that's fair, but also, uh, the, no distillery really ever goes out to make a 30 year old whiskey. For example, it's, you know, they're, they're aiming for your certain age statements and maybe some stock we put aside to be aged that long, but, um, you know, it, they have flavor profiles in mind uh, for those ages so that they'll execute them as, as well as they can uh, with what the resources they have. Um, Harry wants to know what the effect of burning the inside of the barrels have on whiskey. Um, and, and, and a crucial point as well, you know, bourbon barrels are very heavily charred, whereas French oak is um, lightly toasted. And essentially what you're doing is you're opening up the pores inside the casks for as i said before the, the whiskey has to breathe this was into the wood to to go in and extract the flavors and and also the coloring and when you crack the inside of the casks not only do you kind of carbonize the the first layers it adds a little bit of flavor and filtration it also actually gives the liquid access to the interior wood of the casks and gives you larger flavors it caramelizes some sugars it gives you different kind of vanillas and and, and caramels and honeys that way um so it just gives greater access to the wood particularly in, in dense in dense woods it's, it's very uh very helpful um any questions i missed there guys that you can see or um 
No, not, 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 none that I've noticed anyway. Um, I think you've yeah. kind of gotten to all of them there. I don't know, Robin, have you seen any or do you have any? I've certainly not no, seen any. You know, I think we're up stage. Someone yeah, says thank I, you, Matt. I, I, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, <laughs> I, I do see one question: which is what's the strongest whiskey I've had in terms of ABV? Um, whiskey. I, I work in a distillery, and whiskey comes off our still at eighty-two. So a part of our sensory analysis would be, uh, you know, nose and taste at eighty-two. Generally, we water it down very drastically from there. But eighty-two or off column still is about ninety-four. Um, so it's uh yeah probably probably about, probably about 94 6 is the highest i've tasted it and it, it's pretty much just pure ethanol at that point so it's not not all that enjoyable 82 you still have a huge amount of flavor from the grains 94 plus 94 to 96 96 is pretty much the physical limits you can push um alcohol you can never you can never produce 100 percent alcohol it, it, it pretty much doesn't exist and uh, there'll always be some water in it um and uh but uh that's as if it doesn't taste like anything except ethanol at that point happy to move to dram number three guys yeah definitely yeah so i'm gonna pick it up before i go so dram number three here we go there you go it's confusing with the camera reversed so we have this is sailor's home the horizon uh this is a 10 year old blended whiskey so we're on to our third style of whiskey for the evening um and in this uh it is a blend of single malt whiskey uh, and a single grain whiskey so remember the beginning single malt just 100 percent malted barley made in one distillery and single grain is in a big kind of industrial column uh, made from corn or maize uh, and they'll have very different flavor profiles um but they have been matured for uh over 10 years uh in ex bourbon barrels and then at that point, they'll take um, Barbados rum casks, uh, take all of that whiskey from the from the uh, the bourbon casks, marry them together. So you're taking two different types of whiskey, the, the grain and the malt, put them together uh, into the Barbados rum casks, and you're going to get a very deliciously sweet um, whiskey on the nose. So I don't know if you guys want to have a little nose of it there. So I don't know if you guys are getting on the, on the nose of the palate there. There's a lot of brown sugar. There's some tropical fruits, a little kind of mango, papaya. Uh, there's definitely a honey element. Sorry, my dog's jumping around at me. Uh, <laughs> then we have, uh, there's on the palate again, There's it, it lasts quite a long time on the, on the tongue. It's called the finish after you kind of, you kind of swallowed the whiskey itself. And there's that definite uh, brown sugar sweetness that just resides in the background as well. Um, kind of uh, when when we talk about um, sweet or dry whiskeys, this is very much on the, on the sweet side. Uh, this is <laughs> this has a, a lovely residual sugars, and what that is is simply taking casks that used to contain rum from Barbados and bringing them to Ireland uh, and transferring uh, the spirit in a warehouse from the bourbon casks into the rum casks uh, to finish uh, for, for whatever many months to see if I have in here, I know. Um, so, uh, <laughs> just the dog. Uh, <laughs> let, let me get the dog, I'll get the dog. Everyone wants to see the dog. <laughs> we do kind of want to see the dog, to be fair. <laughs> Let's go get your cat. Oh, <laughs> hey. <laughs> This happens. This happens most live shows uh, <laughs> at some point, and someone usually gets a cat. Uh, but this, this is, is what people came to see. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is Indy. Uh, she's a little tiny uh, border collie, uh, and she is apparently wired right now. She slept for most of the day, uh, and now just wants to be a nuisance. Um, you should uh, feed her, feed her a little bit of whiskey. See what happens. <laughs> I, I I I think I probably shouldn't do that, uh, <laughs> or they will take my dog away from me. Um, she is, she's trying to I, she's trying to sniff my microphone in front of the computer. So, um, hello, hi. Maybe she's something to say. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I have a, a whiskey live show twice a month, and she usually shows up once or twice an episode, trying to jump on my lap. 
uh, or squeaking things in the background. Um, but yeah. Um, so what are we thinking of this one, guys? My um, initial thought was that it, it, it seems like creamier than the other mm -hmm. the others. Um, that's about it. Creamier. That's about <laughs> like, it. That is good. Like Robin, I, I like it. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like a nice one to finish on. It's kind of almost like a dessert because it's so much sweeter than the first yeah. two. I don't know. Um, yeah. No, no. no uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't know if that was actually the thing behind but if I'm just making that up, but it's it's kind of like, you know, a, a nice kind of dessert, a nice way to finish it out with something kind exactly. of Exactly, a little product cleanser. And, and, and Robin, you're right, Creamier, absolutely, it has that kind of, um, that the, the, the almost a caramel note to it as well that, that gives that, that little slick sweetness to it. And yeah, one thing as well. I think as well. That's why Sorry, I was say that again? Getting... Sorry, just... Um, I almost got a taste of vanilla, um, which I thought was nice, but maybe that's just wrong. Sorry. No, nope, that, that is not wrong. Ten years in the bourbon cast will give you shit tons of vanilla. Um, <laughs> um, and I was going to say that uh, one of the things is uh, flavor is subjective. Um, so whatever you're tasting or smelling in the glass, you know, your your sense of smell is, but I don't know, it's like eighty times more powerful than your taste. Uh, your your taste. Um, so have a nose of it. Uh, taste it and and try to work out what you're tasting. Um, and importantly, uh, it there's things we call compound tastes. So if you're tasting the likes of uh, bubblegum, marshmallows, like uh, things that are are foods rather than flavors, that's not incorrect because you can break down what those um, flavors, what those foods are. So like I've had whiskeys that reminded me completely of Chewitz, uh Tutti Frutti, or like fruit salad. Um, and if you Google what the ingredients in fruit salad are, it's like pineapple, raspberry, and vanilla. Uh, and they're the three flavors that go into it. And that's exactly what I was tasting in you know, a whiskey. And it's not wrong, even though it sounds kind of ridiculous. Um, but yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to take any questions from either of you guys um, or from the comments. Um, cause we've gone through the three different styles of whiskey. You know, we've had a single malt with a, a, a quite a decent uh, peated back to it, uh, which, which was quite interesting, uh, and a lot of flavor to begin with. So if you do have any uh, spirit left in your glasses at this point, uh, like I was suggesting, you can have a little note between them and see what the different notes are that you can pick up. If you, if you had... Uh, the interest or the foresight to have three different glasses or as Joseph is doing, go between each of the bottles. Uh, and and I suppose, uh, are there any questions you guys have ever had about whiskey in general that you'd always wondered? Or as I said, that, you know, your your uncle's friend's dog told you and you always sounded fucking batshit crazy and you never believed him? Hey, it, was one of those, it was your dog, not my uncle's dog. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I'm just looking in the chat if anyone has had any. Oh, well, someone wants you to plug your your show, um, your your whiskey, your uh, the show that you mentioned a while ago. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, so my website's called potstill.com, uh, and then I've you know socials on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, it's at potstill underscore, uh, but then is a uh, either on YouTube or on Facebook. Uh, twice a month on Thursdays at 8 p.m. So this time uh, it's uh, Potsdill Live. If you Google or if you put into YouTube Potsdill Live, you'll find it too. And then I also have a podcast all about it, Irish whiskey, interviewing people like Donal, you know, learning about Irish whiskey, getting the stories behind it and, and you know, getting giving people, you know, the building blocks to start interests or collections or just learn a bit more in Irish whiskey, and that is called Pot Sealed Radio. Um, and that is uh, on all the kind of podcast apps and whatnot. Um, but I appreciate the question. Um, named after yourself, is it? It's named Pot Sealed after you. Um, yeah, exactly. That's my first name. My, my last name is confusing me, Matt. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we had someone else asking uh, about you again. We had Richard asking. Um, he was saying that he preferred the third whiskey the most, and he's curious about what's your favorite whiskey and why. Um, um, 
what's my favorite whiskey and why? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, I think for me, uh, right now, uh, it's this uh, this uh, ten year old uh, that we're having in the glass right now. Uh, the rum sweetness uh, is is a nice topper to the you know to the evening. It's nine o'clock. I want to sit down with something nice. Uh, if you want to have a relaxing drink, you, you know, you might have some water on the side or throw some ice in or, or, uh, you know, top up with some ginger ale for a mixer. Um, and this, this is versatile. So right now I think this is perfectly where I want to be. And I'm, pr I'm pretty happy about that. Um, and, uh, what is, there's, what's the best whiskey for a student budget that ain't poppy? Uh, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't mean that there's poppy. <laughs> no, yeah, no, I, I misread that. That's fine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Listen, uh, um the uh I, I i mean like i'd stick it easy depends what you're doing like if you're you know if you're celebrating there's loads of different uh there's a lot of different um whiskeys you can go for and if you go on to irishmalts.com uh it's you know the the parent company of three drams uh they have they literally specialize in irish whiskeys and will deliver it straight to your door um and that's, uh, there's, you know, there's a lot there and, and you can kind of filter by your budget. And um, what, I mean, for most of the time, if you're not doing anything crazy and you're just enjoying yourself, you know, for me, a bottle of Tullamore Jew is, you know, 29 euro. Um, keep it, you know, keep one handy, uh, make some Irish coffees, make some cocktails. Uh, that's that's what I do most of the time at that. At that. Um, I see Harry Doyle wants to know what's the most expensive whiskey I've had. Um, most expensive whiskey I've had it is, uh, Balvenie 50, which was $57,000 a bottle. Um, so, uh, I had a glass of that and that was, I didn't pay for it, but, uh, I got to drink it. So that was pretty cool. Um, <laughs> unrelated to what we were talking about otherwise, but, um, yeah, but definitely not one of those for everyone in the audience. Definitely. No, exactly. No, <laughs> uh, I have uh, I happened to work for the sister company to Balvenie, uh, which is a very premium Scotch whiskey. Um, and thankfully I was able to partake in, in one of their, in one of their 50 year old tastings. Uh, anything else from your end guys? Um, <clears throat> uh, I've been keeping an eye on the comments coming in. I don't think there's anything i certainly would have actually been surprised i thought that i was going to prefer the second one the pazzo but actually i probably my favorite one is the third uh which i think is probably um pretty much everyone's favorite at this point i really really liked the yeah. the, the, the last one and i was kind of surprised when i saw there was a single pazzo i thought that was gonna be my favorite but that last one was really really nice um i don't think there's too many questions coming in and i i certainly don't have any i've certainly learned a huge amount um, Ram, did you have any questions or did you get any messages from people looking for questions? Um, nope, no, I think that's about it. Um, I also enjoyed this, definitely um, enjoyed the last one more than the first, I'll say that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, thank you very much, Matt. Um, yeah, I, I'm just going to enjoy this, thank you. That's all right. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to answer Richard's question before we finish up. What's my favorite whiskey cocktail? Whiskey sour with egg whites. Fucking delicious cocktails. Um, it's, funny, it's funny Richard would ask that because he's our, he does all of our cocktails for Fitzak. He actually is a bartender himself. Um, and uh, he at one point did a cocktail demo and he made whiskey sours with the egg whites. And it was, it was a game changer of a cocktail. So he'll be glad to hear that one. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm sure you will. No, egg whites, egg whites are 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 needed in cocktails. Uh, egg yolks makes it a flip, and that makes horrible cocktails, in my opinion. Um, they'll make a whiskey like flip sour. No, no, no. Anyway, irrelevant to what I was talking about. But egg white, egg, egg white sours is 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 the best. Um, what European countries do whiskies that are worth looking at? Um, I mean, Scotland's an obvious one, but if you're ignoring Scotland. Um, there's, there's a few different, there's like 45, uh, whiskey distilleries in Germany, um, that do somewhat, some interesting things, quite hard to find outside of Germany. Same with Netherlands has a one or two interesting distilleries. Um, but if you look at Finland, uh, Finland has a rye distillery, um, which is, uh, 
quite interesting. Hard to find, but very, very interesting. Um, as does Sweden. Uh, but France is probably the closest one. Uh, it's a whiskey called Bren, B-R-E-N-N-E. Um, and that is a Asian cognac cast. And that would be the most accessible outside of Scottish whiskey. Um, or actually in Wales, there's a distillery called Penderen, um, which also does some very interesting whiskeys. Um, so I, 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 I give them a shout as well. Um, but yeah, um, do you guys have any uh, parting words for your, your members of Food Sock as this is your uh your last uh was your last taste or event of the year i was gonna say whiskey tasting um <laughs> definitely, definitely your last whiskey tasting of the year but um uh, steph do you do you like to go first or yeah sure i, I think uh so roshian from our committee was going to join to say that she's just trying to join she's saying she's having a few uh tech issues so we'll just fire ahead anyway um, I suppose just thanks a million to uh, yourself, Potstilled, and thanks a million as well to John um, and everyone at Three Drums for, for putting together this tasting. I mean, you know, um, it's it's been great to, to get to try some really, really good whiskeys and, and at a great price as well. I know there was a question came in there about, you know, student budgets and that, and, and you guys really made this accessible at, on a student budget, which we really, really appreciate. Uh, I mean, I've certainly learned a huge amount. Uh, I've definitely learned enough to go down the pub and really annoy my friends pretending I know about whiskey now even more so than I normally do so um yeah we really really appreciate it thank you so much for you know uh, being so generous with your time and, and being so generous with um you know kind of kind of the, the the deal that you did did this as well I really hope all the members have enjoyed it um it's probably a lot of people's first time getting into whiskey and in that um I've gotten a few messages from people who were maybe expecting We'll say less intense flavors than than they may be experienced, but uh, hopefully just kind of a good kind of um, and, and those are just from Robin. Um, <laughs> but um, hopefully, you know, people are um, uh, have found this kind of a, a really nice kind of first step into it, and, and it's definitely something that uh, is is great to get into. We would definitely recommend if anyone has really enjoyed tonight, check out Three Drums, check out the subscriptions that they do. Uh, it's a really really cool thing to get involved in. They're a really cool Irish business who have adapted really really well to COVID. And again, you know, they've, they've been really sound to food stock. We'll definitely be, I'm sure, in touch with them again, uh, maybe even next year when the new committee is voted in. Um, so thank you all so much. I don't know, Robin, if you have any parting words, you put me on the spot, I'll put you on the spot. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, I uh, just thank, thank you, Madden, thank you, John, and, and Jonah as well for, for popping on. Um, and just in terms of, of people who are members of the society here, we also have our AGM. Next week, um, our annual general meeting, just if anyone would like to pop along to that, that's on um, April 14th at seven o'clock. So yeah, um, but other than that, um, thanks again, Matthew. Uh, Matt, sorry, Matthew. Albert. It's a bit odd to call him by his surname. Um, <laughs> actually, um, we will have a Zoom link, and what we might do actually with that is oh, we will just right. email that because I know there's an email list from uh, when you guys sent out the link. What we might do is we might just email that out in about 10 minutes or so. It's just if people want to come on. Uh, I know some of the committee, I think, are on that call at the moment. Uh, people can, you know, chat about the, the evening or whatever. We'll just send that out, just if people want to socialize. You might find, especially if there's any first years who haven't gotten to make any friends, you might find yourself uh, a lot more sociable after three whiskeys. Uh, I certainly <laughs> do. You might find it easier to put yourself out there. So uh, we'll, we'll email that out in about 10 minutes, but there's no pressure on anyone to join or whatever. Uh, just just if people want to maybe chat about it i know you're probably fed up listening to myself robin and pot still uh you guys can can have your say um but yeah thanks a minute matt we, we really do appreciate it it's been I, i've really enjoyed it anyway it's been a great evening oh yeah. i appreciate you guys uh getting involved and uh big up ucd and don't mind john and his ucc cork nonsense um and uh you know oh, cork, uh, am I right? sorry yeah all right um <laughs> Congrats on a good year, guys, and uh, best luck with the AGM. All right, thank you so much. All right, good luck. All right.